Newton Aircliffe is a town in County Durham, England. It has grown rapidly since World War II, home to nearly 30,000 people. His name is Ken Robson. He was a process worker in a local factory moulding plastics until a bad back took, took this away from him. Once he retired, he needed something to do, so he started a local neighbourhood watch, then set up a residence association. This year, he was elected as a town councillor and put his work into the community. So, can you introduce yourself and your role in the community? Hello, yes. Um, my name is Ken Robson. I am a councillor at local level and I run a group called Acorn Residents Association, which does many, many things in the community, including um, bus trips for the elderly and for children. It also does parties for Halloween and takes children out to places like Hall Hill Farm, where they can feed sheep or lambs or whatever, you know. And um, it's just a general community group that's out there to help the community and the, the area in which we live. A wooden Jack and Jill bench that is located in the front of the council at King Robson's house. It has two seats either side of the table, which are attached to each other, was stolen very early in the morning of just a normal day. The bench is one of my greatest tools. I like to put people at ease when I'm talking to them. I don't want anyone to think that I'm a councillor talking down to them. And it's just nice to have a conversation, sitting, talking like normal people do on a park bench about a lovely day. Um, I can entertain dogs, I can entertain children at the same time in full view of the public. Councillor Ken Robson reported the crime to the police immediately. A police officer took a copy of Ken's CCTV footage to try and identify the thief. Ken also put the video on Facebook to try and inform other locals of the crime and possibly identify the thief. I discovered the crime having been out on a normal Sunday morning litter pick with some friends in a local park. I came home and my wife asked me um, where I'd put the bench. And of course, like I said, well, I, I, I've never seen the bench. What's happened to it? And she pointed out then it was missing. When one comes out of a house, you get into the car and you very rarely look around to see what your surroundings are. So when I came back, I was quite surprised to see it gone. Of course, fortunately, two weeks earlier, I'd installed um, CCTV, which gave me the opportunity to have a look and see actually when the bench disappeared. Um, I was quite surprised at 4am to see some walking, someone walking up the path, picking up the bench and walking away with it. It's quite a heavy thing. And for one person to pick that up, he must have been really in pain carrying that away, or he must have really been desperate to have a garden bench. The 19th to 16th, 2016, the criminal arrives at 12 minutes past 4 a.m. and leaves at 13 minutes past 4 in the morning with the bench. The criminal is first seen going past on a bike where he looks down the driveway before coming back without his bike. The criminal can clearly be seen walking down the driveway and then leaving after having picked up the bench. The criminal is clearly male and appears to move quickly with the bench as if running away. He looks as if he has thought through this crime beforehand as he seems to know where he is going and what he is doing. However, he does not take the statue that has been placed on the bench, but instead removes it and takes only the bench. The CCTV footage, when I looked back on it, was of a chap riding past on a, on a bicycle, which was quite comical at 10 past 4 in the morning anyway. He was, he was searching gardens, obviously, because he was peering into gardens as he went past. I'm surprised he didn't fall off his bike. But um, the bicycle disappears, and then a couple of minutes later, this chap comes back as a pedestrian, picks up the bench, and wanders off with it. And I'm thinking, am I seeing this? Is this real? But this guy, this guy did, he wandered off with a, uh, with a bench, and one presumes what he did was use a bicycle to take it away. It's quite a heavy bench. Um, it's an old one, but it's quite heavy, and um, I assume he had some sort of a rupture carrying it away. What was your involvement in the, in the investigation? Prior to this, we had had a, another crime, and it, it incurred someone taking flowers out of a, a communal tub. Unfortunately, this gentleman, when he was taking the tubs out, he was spotted by someone who had gone to school with him a few years prior. So in order to get the, the plant back, we used Facebook as a, as a tool and uh, mentioned his name on Facebook. Within two hours, the plant was brought back along with an apology and a an, uh, mumbled explanation of how this guy was drunk and it was just one of those things. Whilst I was away on holiday a few months ago, a neighbour of mine used my drive to park a car in. 
When I came back, I was told that it had been scratched whilst it was on my drive. Consequently, I decided it would be a good idea to fit CCTV. I was very, very surprised at how cheap it is to put in, and I had it two cameras installed on the front of the house and two on the back. So the one camera was shown on the back of the car, one camera was shown on the front of the car, but also goes onto the roadside in front. The camera footage was absolutely fantastic of this, this chap walking up the, uh, up the drive. It's definitely something I would recommend for other people to do, to install this thing. The police, when I was talking to the police, said they wish that most people had it, because if a crime's committed at the bottom of your street, you can tell which direction the guy's going in through someone else's CCTV. It's a wonderful tool for them, and it's a wonderful tool for people who install CCTV, and there's also a good chance you might get your goods back as well. The crime was solved by the great British public and our local beat team. One of the police officers' colleagues recognised the thief and they, go, and they went to arrest him. The thief was not at his known address, so the officers went to visit other addresses he had, been known to, he had been known to frequently visit. Ken had a lot of response online to his Facebook post for many people to say that they knew of them, who the thief is. The police officers managed to track the man down, which is in his arrest. The thief confessed to around 12 different theft crimes. In court, the thief was on to pay £158.48 pence in compensation to all of his victims, with £50 awarded to Ken Robson. The punishment itself was fair comment on the size of the crime. Stealing a, stealing a, a garden bench, it isn't physically violent. It's not causing me any great major upheaval. So I wouldn't like to see him um, hung or jailed for life for stealing it, so you have to make the punishment fit the crime. I believe the judge was probably right in his sentencing. He found him £150, and if he's unemployed, that's quite a lot of money to pay back. He awarded me a £50 uh, compensation to replace the bench. As it happens, the bench was recovered, so the £50 is actually um, profit enough to replace the bench once it starts to go rotten. Um, the only problem is, if someone has no money, how do you get money off them? Uh, um, the judge would probably accept something like a penny a week or five pence a week um, to be paid over a period of time. I'm 65 year old, um, I could be 90 before I get my 50 pounds back. But um, has it taught him, a le has it taught him a lesson? I'm not sure about that because he was back in court within a few days for stealing from someone else. The police returned the bench to Ken's driveway, putting the statue back on top where it was to begin with. Ken returned home to find his bench and was surprised to see it back, but very happy.